As with any modeling project, it's good to find reference images. I found this head of a snake on Google Images. I then needed to find a reference image for the body of the snake. I couldn't find one that was stretched out and I needed it to be for the initial pose. I could only find these ones that were kind of twisted. So what I did was I jumped into Adobe Illustrator using my pen tool. I just kind of drew out what I thought a snake's body might look like. Bringing all my references images into, into Cinema 4D, I then started modeling the head of my snake, snake starting off with a cube. I just used a couple of spheres and a symmetry object to create the eyeballs. With my snake fully modeled, it was now time to move into unwrapping the UVs. First of all, I created a simple material with a tiled shader applied to it. I then applied that to my snake. And this is what I was gonna be using to give myself an idea of how the texture was gonna look once I was trying to unwrap it. I made some adjustments to projection mode and the orientation of the material. Now before I did anything further, I created a simple spline, which I then aligned the geometry of the snake to. I'll be using this later when I want to animate my snake. Now when it comes to unwrapping UVs, you have to decide where do you want your seams to be. Just like on your jeans or on your, on your t-shirt, you have seams. So we need to put the seams somewhere where they're not going to be seen. So in this case, it's going to be the belly of the snake because that's going to be hidden by the floor. In this example, you can see where I want my seams to be. Then we're going to be able to unwrap our UVs just like I'm showing you here. So I needed to tell Cinema where I wanted my seam to be and I'm doing that here with the selection of this line. After that was done, it was simply a case of just applying that to unwrap the UVs. Next it was time to start texturing and lighting. So I just open up the original material that I created at the very start and I'm going to be using the color channel to load in the snake material. This is a snake material that I found on the internet. It's basically a seamless texture which has snake scales on it. I had to make some adjustments to the UVs because as you can see the scales were a bit too big for the snake. I also had to fix the problem I was having with the with the smaller scales because snakes tend to have these smaller scales on their bellies so I just had to kind of stop them from creeping up along the side of the snake and just make sure that they were focused more around the snake's belly. Next I started creating my lights. I created a number of lights, two on each side and one on the top. This is what the first test render was looking at. So as it looking like, I should say. So as you can see, we have a number of tweaks that need to be made to the snake's material, including creating some displacement and some reflection. So I added in a reflective floor and I told the lights to not be reflected by it. This is what the next test render was looking like. So as you can see, it's quite noisy and this, the reflection on the snake isn't looking great. I made some further tweaks to the anti-aliasing settings and the samples in the reflection and the snake's texture to get this nice result. So I was happy with that. Now it was time to move into animating the snake. So to do this, it was just a case of extending out the spline that I created at the start, just to give the snake a bit more space to move. I then used the offset parameter in the spline wrap deformer to animate the snake's position along the spline. As you can see, the lights are not following along with the snake. Now I didn't want this to happen, so I created a camera, told it to follow the snake, and then I told the lights to also follow the camera. So now you can see our lights are following along with the snake. So too is the newly created camera. Now it was time for one final test render before I moved into the render settings and rendered this all out. So this is what the final render looked like. 
And one last thing I actually did before I rendered this out was I duplicated the snake and the animation and just added in a little friend for him to play with. I also did another render from a different camera angle where I used depth of field to create shifting focus. 